Hello. 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 Um, if that, I'm with Demon Mama on the phone. Sorry, it's my spouse. Okay. The uh, other person was yelling at me. Oh, oh. Okay, yeah, I, I heard some of your conversation with last night, and I will be completely upfront and honest with you. Um, I, I, I was not... Know we were live. What's that? My spouse didn't know we were live. Oh, okay. Well, you're definitely live now, so... Yeah, that explains a bit of where the, that conversation went. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it seemed pretty uh pretty intense and I I was not uh I was not particularly fond of uh of some of the arguments that were being made last night. Uh and I understand that uh it's um it's oh hold on a second. People are saying my audio is too low. Hold on, let me boost my audio up here. All right. Okay. How's that? Is that a little better everybody? I boosted my audio up. Mm, there we go. Sorry. I, whenever I use Discord, I feel like I always have some kind of quirky audio issues. But hopefully uh, the gain bump will fix things for the uh, for the audience. Um, okay. yeah. Is that better? Is that better, chat? Chat, let me know if that's better. Should be. I just boosted the gain pretty significantly. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, I feel like what I had to say was uh, fairly uh, straightforward and... Um, and uh, and I, I I don't know where your contention is coming from with what I had to say, um, but uh, but uh, l I guess let's talk it out. I, I am hoping that it can be a little more productive than w the way that it went with Vosh last night because I do feel like there was some um, there was some of the arguments that were made. I don't want to tie you to the argument last night, but there were some that I would consider to be highly suspect and downright immoral. And I hope we don't. I, don't, I hope we don't get in that today. The, which ones they are? I'm not even going to try to explain myself. If that's uh, if you don't want to get bumped. Look, my intention with your claim is basically I'm going to try and make it. Um, Mm. I'm going to try and make it a bit more clear. A, I am contending the claim that Palestinians do not can, have anything they can do in this situation to better their own situation. Oh, Either um, I think they do. Um, but but yeah, wait. go ahead. Either inside Gaza or in front of Israel, which is also very important and something Vash kind of ignored. Um, as in empowering Palestinians or specifically other um, other factions of the Palestinian population that would be much more difficult to sell to the Israeli population and as being crazy therapists, basically. Okay. So what you're saying is um, you're you you think that the way that I've talked about it is incorrect, that there's more that Palestinians can do to fight against the um, the fact that they've been locked in an open air prison, and uh, that their human rights have been violated for decades. No, it, um, they can be empowered to do more things. They okay. do not have ability right now. But ending the state of Israel is not the only way to get that empowerment there. Oh well, there I've are... never argued. Uh, I've never argued for the ending of the state of Israel at all. I... Um, I mean, I think that we could have a conversation because I do tend to uh, have extremely strong critiques of states uh, generally, uh, all states, uh, regardless of uh, of their justification, um, because I, I do tend to have a lot of um, I do tend to have a lot of affinity for uh, anarchist philosophy. Um, Though I don't really, I don't really use any labels myself because I just I think labels are usually pretty cringe and limiting. But um, well, I think for, for this particular conversation, I think we can uh, we can say yeah. that uh, we'll set aside at least to some degree my general opinions on states and acknowledge the fact that um, that e things can be much better without having to end the Israel state, which is not something that I've I've, I've advocated for in my stream coverage. Okay. That's my first line of contention. And my second 
basically line of contention is you're referring to the um we're talking about Hamas, not Hezbollah, Hamas. Yes, Hamas. Is yep. minority fa- faction that arose due to Israeli oppression. Yeah. Which my problem with that is twofold. Seriously. Okay. The first one is that's kind of irrelevant to the discussion, and I really have a problem with that. Like, okay. Uh, they're they can. Uh, like the Palestinians need to get right because they're people. Th- that's the end and the start of the result. The status of Hamas is. Eh. But the Basically, status of Hamas, but the status of Hamas is being used to justify um, absolutely deranged uh, overreactions. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, have... it's part and parcel. So I think that you have to have a realistic approach on it. Like, for example, hold on, I can make a, a parallel here in the United States. Um, just the other day, um, uh, Donald Trump went on a deranged rant about um, how shoplifting has apparently gone up in the United States, which is, of course, a contended uh, a contended st- statistic anyway. But he said that uh, in order to stop this rampant crime, we should make it legal uh, for shop owners to be able to shoot and kill um, shoplifters. Um, and uh, for that, uh, I think it's perfectly justified to go, um, okay, nobody thinks like shoplifting is the ideal way of things to be or even necessarily a good thing, but uh, uh, shoplifting is not that big of a, is not as big of a problem as, as, uh, as President Trump is making it out to be. And also uh, that's a complete and utter overreaction that is going to inevitably target innocent people. That's the parallel I would make. It's the same thing. You have to be able to address the claims uh, when when a state is using exaggerated claims of of who they're contending against. America did this too when uh, it, w- leading up to the Iraq War. Um, instead of like uh, actually talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, you know Osama bin Laden or anything like that. They uh, they would spin up this this gigantic, Hamas overwhelming is, enemy. Hamas is the democratically elected government of Gaza. The Palestinians had their own civil war about this. Um, yeah, that doesn't really change anything. That doesn't really change anything. I don't know anything about the. Uh, I don't know. I don't know anything about uh, how those election results came around, and I don't think that that changes what I'm saying at all. A, a the G- yeah, Gaza, Gaza is only some... one section of Palestine, and it's only one section of people. Regardless of how you slice it, um, the the people who enact these things are a minority. It doesn't like you can you can try and and yeah, and, and create a, a fear. I mean, but, the... but like Bibi is also a minority in Israel. Hello. At what? Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you not hear me? No. Um, Bibi is also a minority in Israel. He's just one guy. That's um, how governments work. Uh, that's true, but, bl- but he's but 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 he's also controlling more. And uh, if and it would be one thing. It, hold on, hold on a second. It would be one thing if uh, I was on the opposite side trying to downplay. Um, the reverse situation where Palestine controlled all of Israel, and we were talking about, uh, you know, the the res, uh, like the 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 violent fascistic re- resistance leader or whatever you want to call it, uh, Bibi Netanyahu. But we're not. Bibi Netanyahu, Netanyahu controls. He is in charge of the government. He's he's in charge of the military, and the military is actively doing what he says. The, the parallel is not even close to the same on like multiple levels. Can just, I explain? It, this is important to me, by the way. I think that this is the thing that actually gets lost in this con- in this sure. conversation. Of conversation course. Because with- I don't think that... Look, the reason I believe that this is important to acknowledge the Hamas is the reigning government is very simple. Because the Palestinians need not to excise this small minority of crazy people. They need a replacement government, which is the thing that the leftists can help them build. But nobody is trying to build a replacement stable government. I don't because... believe that. I don't believe that. I don't think that's true. I don't believe you that don't it's true that, that there's not internal resistance to, to Hamas. I just don't believe that. I don't no, I think that's just is... factually incorrect. Yes, I'm not saying. I'm saying you I'm saying that you said what as American leftists can be done mm-hmm. and 
seriously, the answer is empower the secular factions of the Palestinian population. Uh, the sure, but I think that's already happening. I mean, I can give a direct example of this. Um, and a direct example is actually from the person that you argued with last night, something that I uh, I even participated in. Um, when Vosh raised money for the PCRF, uh, which is a children's hospital uh, uh, that operates in Palestine, taking care of children. For that. What's that? Not the hospital. He should, collecting money for a children's hospital is fine. The fact that he refused to go to Aza to, to get the reward is the thing that annoys me. Um, okay. But, um, I mean, whatever. I, I, uh, I, I don't know. I can't speak to that. But the rate... Uh, <laughs> no, oh, my God. Seriously? Um, That's I, what I'm talking about. The way to empower the secular part no, but, of us. But that is empowering them. Okay, but okay, w this is the problem that I have with this argument, okay. which is that no, nobody, no, like, I don't think there's any, like, first of all, no, I don't know of any, uh, I know there's some cringe lefties who like down, like super downplay Hamas or whatever, make like jokes about it or whatever, but that's not a predominant opinion at all. And also um, what you're talking about is what what I'm saying is I make a stream talking about the uh, apartheid, the decades long apartheid state, the uh, empowerment, the direct empowerment by conservative actors in the controlling government of Israel, uh, making things worse and making these things happen, uh, setting up the do dominoes for this shit to happen. And then your response oh, is, well, leftists, wait, hold on, wait, 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 hold on. Well, and your response is, well, leftists need to empower the secular elements. Well, that also applies 100% um, to uh, that applies 100% to Israel as well, which they're in more yes. of a position of power. <laughs> no, no, they're no, in more no. of a position you, of power than American leftists are. You are. Huh? You just hit something that is so correct, you don't even know it. Uh, okay. Yes. You say so. Yes. What is happening currently in Israel is that Bibi Netanyahu and his bunch of flying monkeys, just so you know, Ben Gvir, that cool that you read. Mm -hmm. uh, the, so like, he's been declared to, uh, he, he's been declared like years, like 20 years ago, he's been declared too poisonous to touch by every Israeli security force. Okay. They would not work with him. He is considered too insane to ever let next to weapons, right? officially. So he is not considered a good representative of what the average Israeli wants. By the average Israeli. And by pretty much the Israeli state not currently holding the chokehold of Bibi. The okay. thing is well, we're, you're there... talking about the defense minister, right? Or are you talking about um or are you talking about the guy who was talking about uh, I sorry I, uh, the one I, with I, the Nakba. The one with the oh the one with the Nakba. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, well, I mean, that's fine. I mean, we have our people like that, too, who are like, um, who are like, uh, not, who are like, like, I mean, we have people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who are, uh, elected in, you know, areas like enclaves of extreme right-wing thought in America, and who say completely deranged and, um, and unhinged um, things. But, but, but... but but that type of person isn't a response to a criticism of uh, if, like, say, if, if somebody was denouncing America for engaging in genocidal action, um, saying, oh, well, you know, um, uh, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene is, is bad and crazy. That wouldn't be a defense. That would be more evidence that, oh, my God, the controlling power here is it needs to get its shit in order. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. So just where. Yeah. The population of Israel agrees with you. Well, we I'm have glad to hear that. We have voted Bibi out, as in he was elected through electoral means, not by majority vote, five times mm -hmm. in a row. Okay. Okay? So yeah. it's, this is the point where why was debated, and it's really not debatable. This is incredibly unpopular, and it is partially up 
held by American conservative money, a thing that neither oh, the I don't disagree Soviet. with you on that at all. I don't disagree with you at all about American conservative money um, influencing this. Like, um, no. in fact, it's something I've talked about extensively. But I just don't. I don't understand how any of this is an argument to what I said. What I what I've been talking about explicitly is how um, there needs to be a, uni a unilateral pressure to change this shit. I mean, one of the things that I brought up in my segment was explicitly calling out Joe Biden for looking the other way. Can we walk back? Sure. You keep asking me a question that the answer is just the reason one. Like you keep asking me, how does this justify? It doesn't. Your question, my point was, my contention with Vox was that the misinformation he spread is makes people make decisions which are not actually conducive to his stated goal. Okay. This is not in any way a defense of the state of Israel. I would like this to end. Listen, when I told Vash I list and used to live next to Palestinian, he called me like, like we were, oh yeah, if we live in different, no. We have mixed cities in Israel. 20% of our population are Arab. I lived in Arab cities where I paid money to the Arab landlord, to rent. So it's not like it was some sort of land grab. It was just a rent. All my neighbors were Arab. Okay. It's not an issue. I am not scared to live in a neighborhood full of Arab people. The thing that concerns me about Aza are the, not the fact that Arab people might get human rights, because Arab people already got human rights in Israel, and somehow everybody's fine. Um, they did. We have 20% population of Israeli citizens who are Arabs, and they have all the rights of Israeli citizens. Right. Um, but but we're not, we're not talking about uh, we're not talking about Arab, Arab, Arab uh, you know, ethnicity Israelis, are we? We're talking about Palestine, right? But regardless of the ethnicity question, my point was to say that you that Vash was seriously, like seriously, overestimated the the amount of actual destination between people, like. People work in the same workplaces, on the same jobs. You, as an Israeli, are very likely to have a Palestinian boss who lives in Gaza. Okay? So, like, yes, I don't want to defend this. There is no need to defend this. I truly believe that if, if Palestine could be empowered to be an economy that is not solely dependent on donations, from countries who wish Israel will, while not actually wishing Palestine any good. That is also an important part. None uh, of those countries, none of those, uh, that's, seriously, have you heard of the Saudi Arabia uh, treaty? I just, I don't know if, I don't know if characterizing the, the, the survival of a country that is currently like being verifiably choked out um, as like uh, being funded purely by bad actors who wish Israel well is like effective or accurate. Like I have no doubt that there are people who do that. I mean, that's um, arguably a large critique of NGOs worldwide. Like that there are a oh. lot of um, there are a lot of NGOs that actually sort of uh, carry forward then, the will of of the the uh, government that they no, you know. But what they really said about that. Oh, what's that? The point I was trying to make is not that the Palestinian people are dependent on this. Like, mm -hmm. the people themselves are all. I said the Palestinian economy. That's okay. why I offer but... tourism. I believe that shifting the economy to a different thing will allow the Palestinians to empower themselves more. Okay. If they are... But some, this is one of the areas where I think that, um, and may, maybe this is just you know me trying to extend an olive branch in a certain way, you know, to try and like, uh, but um, you the Palestinian to... people have a are very limited, extremely limited by Israel in what they can do, 
in how they can yes. self-control. So it's kind I of, um, it comes off as, and I know you, I'm, ge I'm guessing, I'm trying to be charitable here and say that you're not trying to do this, but it comes off as psychotic um, to, to, to sort of say, hey, this, this, this uh, fully, mil hold on, let me, fi let me finish though, let me finish. Um, this completely occupied area that has very, very little wiggle room to do anything needs to be doing things differently. Um, when the, the the Israeli government could just stop choking them as hard and it would actually make things a lot better, like a lot better and faster. And then maybe the problems that you're talking about wouldn't even be a problem at all. Two things about that. I think Palestinians needed to change something. Huh? Well, it's not the Palestinians I'm talking about needing to change. Um, I mean, okay, I, it sounded like that's what you said. I mean, that sounded like what, what you said. Because, I mean, I think you literally used the word, like, they. Like, they need to do this. They as in, okay, not, not they, okay, I understood. So, no, I do not, I believe that currently the Palestinian authority, both the Palestinian authority and Gaza are in a position where they can, can kickstart their own economy if they have influx of people with outside cash. Fuck tourism, just go there and buy clothes, whatever. Uh -huh. They have the infrastructure. And then those people, not the Hamas, those people will have money. Okay. And that is the thing you want. Sure. But that you, is see how, you see how that might be severely complicated when the Israeli state has just turned off all power to the entirety of the Gaza Strip and is now talking about how uh, Netanyahu is talking about how he, he's going to turn all quote unquote all Hamas hiding locations into rubble that might like severely impact their ability to do that right and that this has been an ongoing thing like this is the problem like at the end of the day um, at the end of the day any solution any solution that doesn't um, point out the fact that the most powerful entity is enacting a inhumane uh, just like uh, horrifically destructive uh, and poisonous regime um, is is equivocation. It's 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 avoiding the core issue. And uh, like I recognize that there are political complications in getting Netanyahu out of power. I mean, God knows uh, uh, Americans were trying to get a lot of Americans, not just even lefties, but a lot of Americans were trying to get Trump out of power while Trump was doing damage. But also, that doesn't negate any critiques of what that state is doing and what the state has done leading up to that point. And I don't know. Um, I understand that some of the... Um, yeah, I understand... Did it I, what's that? I never said anything of what I said negates any of your critiques. Okay. I was very clear about that. Uh, uh, that and that's when great. I was talking the risk saying they, and I'm sorry, I needed to be clear, it is very late. That's fine. The reason I'm talking to you is people hear Israel turn off the lights to Aza, and then the Aza tourist industry, to which you can get through Egypt. Uh -huh. You don't have to enter Israel if you don't want. We'll see nobody for three years. And that truly does make the Hamas stronger. And I believe that that is effective, boots on the ground thing people could do. And I really, really like dislike the fact that Russia discouraged this course of action. That is all I'm saying. Oh, okay. So you're, you think that, that Vosh was discouraging uh, uh, a uh, utilizing tourism to the largest degree to be able to create like a ultra. I mean, I never got the the idea that he was doing that. He but I, but actually, I'm not here to really defend Vosh's position. I mean, I certainly don't discourage um, anything like that. But I also am willing to completely acknowledge that um, that like I, think I, I just I feel like I feel like like. I feel like it's kind of like, um, how do I make an analogy for this? Um, if, if in a conversation about um, being on the brink of like a, a massive genocidal push by a right wing authoritarian government, um, the, the victim of that, the, 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 the primary victims of that being like civilians, obviously, and then the then like to respond to that with like these types of, of like, well, you could have done this better. It's kind of like, um, I don't know. I don't 
it, it's kind of, I don't know. It's like kind of like criticizing somebody when they're down. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you know, if it was me, I would have done this differently. And I think it just comes off as it comes off as bad. I, I did not say and I did not point out any a single thing which I believe that the Palestinians could quote unquote do better. I mean, I think they have power <sighs> leverage in this situation. But that is not the same thing. Look, the situation in, with, Palis, with Palestine and Palestinians is much more complex than people seem to think. Like, um, there. Well, that's um, obviously true. Like, people on Twitter have been um, monstrous talking about this. People on even YouTube have been monstrous about this, and even government officials. I mean, again, the uh, I, I, I highlighted a couple of statements from uh, from an American and a Ukrainian famous politician whose behaviors, I think, were um, deranged. Ukrainian thing. It's actually pretty easily explainable in a way which you seem to just not know. Um, Ukrainian's biggest ex export are Hasidic Jews holy sites. What's that? Sorry. One of Ukraine's biggest tourist exports is mm -hmm. Hasidic holy site. Right, but that doesn't holy that doesn't wait. That's but that's not a that's an an explanation, not an excuse. Like I already I knew. I already knew that. I already knew that there's a huge overlap between uh, the Ukrainian population and uh, and 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 you know devout Jewish people. Like that's like a matter of history. Um, but like that doesn't that doesn't mean that what he said is correct. It means that he's. Uh, it means that this leader who has a very good reason to be able to go. Oh my God. Uh, the 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 the. Uh, the parallels between my situation that my country is in and the the situation that's unfolding right now in Israel towards Palestine, there's a lot of similarities here. Um, and his statement was to like to basically say, like, um, yeah, you know what, uh, Israel has every single right to do whatever they need to do uh, to punish these disgusting and horrible terrorists. Yeah. Instead of going, hey, wait a minute, I would I urge it. caution, death of civilians is not a good thing no matter who does it. If you expect from an Ukrainian Jew of that age to not support Israel, I'm sorry. That is a lost cause. Okay, but that doesn't matter. That's not an argument. That's just cope. That's just saying, oh, well, uh, whatever. It's still wrong. Like, I have every single right to call it out as wrong. That's like being like, yeah. oh, that's like being like, that's like being, wait, hold on a second. That's like being like, oh, well, you know, you shouldn't expect a Southern, a Southern 50 year old white guy to not be racist. And it's like, no, actually it's still wrong when they're racist. Um, and I think it's fair to call it out. And I think the only way, like you don't just, you don't, you don't win by not calling out bad behavior when you see it, it's bad. What he said was uh, was unequivocally going to help justify on an international level people looking the other way at the horror that is currently unfolding at on innocent people. There's a point that you keep going back to which really bothers me. Okay, what bothers you? The justification thing. What justification thing? There is none. That's what I'm saying. You keep going, that's not a justification, but nobody gave to you as one. But that's you did. No, thing. no, oh, come on. Like, come on, you did. When I say I criticized Zelensky because his statement was bad, oh, no. and then and you said, and okay. then you say, and then you say, well, there's a reason for that, and then you give, and then you say the reason. I say, well, that's not an excuse or a justification. So, like, yeah, okay, fine. Then just accept good. that I'm correct. <laughs> it's that easy. Huh? Just I, accept that I'm correct in my statement because I am. I was right to say that what Zelensky's saying is bullshit. Never claimed otherwise. Yeah. That's the problem. Okay, but you kind of did. You you, no, you you do this kind of thing. I've noticed this a couple times in this conversation where you don't really explicitly say I disagree with you, but you inter you but you inject like a, a slightly a disagreeing a slightly disagreeing statement and I go, Well, okay, but that doesn't actually address what I'm saying and then you go, Well, I wasn't disagreeing with you, but you kind of were. I think that there is an actual lack of communication here. I'm sorry. That's fine. Uh, I'm just trying to explain like like my perspective when i say something and then yeah honestly huh really can i be like personally honest with you for five sure. seconds go for it i do not 
I am not used to talking to people who used to talking to people who like Israel that much. Sorry, you're not most, used. You, you're not. You're most, not. You're not used to talking to people who are used to talking to people who don't like Israel. No, who do like Israel. Okay, so you're used to arguing with like super anti-Israel people. No. In Israel, people do not like Israel. I have to keep reminding myself that Americans will assume that I like Israel and defend Israel because I'm an Israeli. Israelis well, I'm, not will... I'm not assuming that. It's just that, the, okay, I can explain where, where, that, where I think this miscommunication is happening. When, oh, um, I'd be happy to hear. Huh? I said I'd be happy to hear that. Yeah, like I think I think it's just a matter of um like generally um like I don't know, when I say like here's a statement that I say and then somebody responds to that by saying well actually or 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 this but this that's usually at least to me interpreted as a counterpoint like if i say zelensky said this and it's correct incorrect and you say well the reason for that is this that sounds like it's a counterpoint which makes me go okay well now i'm going to read this as a counterpoint and if that's not the I case see. that's fine but but it's just that's how it that's how it comes across so it's not that i like assume that you love israel or anything like that um, because I don't really, Nobody I don't really like know you, but. Can I be honest? Nobody uh -huh. in Israel loves it. It's the most Israeli thing. Try to tell Isra Israelis that Israel is a good country and be any Israelis, not even like extremely devoted, like, um, Zionist or anything like this. The average Israeli, tell them, I heard Israel is the greatest country ever. And they will tell you the food was good and then they will start complaining and complain and complain and will refuse to accept statistical data. Oh. We are not fond of this country. Um, so like, yeah, I understand what you're talking about. Listen, I don't think that the Palestinians could have done anything else. They have been screwed over by much more than just the state of Israel. Yeah, but I mean, Right in the current, yes, of course, but in the current state of affairs, like Israel has complete control over Palestine, complete military occupation of Palestine. Um, um, let's, uh, it's not, not recognized as a separate state, it's recognized as an occupied territory, and so yeah. that 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 is an okay. incredibly, incredibly important piece of information in all of this, in every single bit of this. Yeah, can I just uh, tell you about like one thing uh -huh. um so you're uh there's a problem where we're talking about both the um legal um status of the gaza strip and the legal state of, of the west bank and they're uh -huh. a bit different but for the sake of this argument basically uh -huh. There is not a unified right now Palestinian authority. There are two authorities which are officially at war. So talking about the Palestinians as a unified unit when they are at full war with each other is a bit problematic, just like at a pragmatic level. Mm -hmm. So the Palestinians are school. The Palestinians are actually more school than the Americans th seem to think, like seriously. Are, are, if, are more what? Sorry, what was the word? The Palestinians are in worse shape internationally than leftist Americans seem to think, because A, leftist Americans seem to think that their only problem is the occupation of Israel, and they also seem to think that the only thing that upholds the occupation of Israel is the so-called American military. Um, yeah, but I mean, okay, but I don't think, I don't think, I mean, I hear where you're coming from, but at the same time, like, I just, I feel like it's, I feel like, um, I feel like it's a little bit, uh, a little bit silly to go, 
Yeah, well, it's not their only problem, but uh, but being completely occupied by uh, and in, in, in a in a state of martial law, like literally no, military I, I law, that's a pretty that. huge <laughs> deal. And obviously, no, that's going to make a lot of difference, problem. right? Not in turn. Obviously, they're the bad, the the thing that affects the life ex, uh, life quality for the worst in the Gaza Strip right now is a hundred percent Israel. Yeah, of course. Okay. So that's pretty major, right? Like this is a like yeah, obviously is uh, there is never one single source of all problems. But I think we can point out that that's a very, 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 very major issue, and I think that it's um it's a pretty important one to talk about. Like, you know, really important. You know what? You know what? I don't disagree with that to the to an extent, except for one thing. Which is? Where you believe that talking about it in this manner is critical or even conducive to a solution. Um, I don't know. Uh, I I think that yeah. on on yeah. this particular yeah. issue, I think on this particular issue, uh, uh, that's an unre an unreasonable expectation. Um, I'm talking about this issue for a number of reasons because I think that the more people who recognize the absolute horror that's going on that is, and the issue that we're talking about right now, the um, the acts of, of so-called reprisal uh, on to Palestinian civilians by the Israeli military, those are immediately rele relevant to the, mil to the state. And I think that educating people and getting people to think about it and take the right position on it, which is to unequivocally call it out for what it is, is very important. Obviously, I cannot instantly solve everything. I'm literally just a YouTuber and at, and I'm just like a politically interested YouTuber, so I'm only able to do so much. But um, I do think, I do actually, I'm, I, I'm willing to say that I think it's very, very important to inform people on these things, especially because of a, lo a lot of Americans are completely and utterly ignorant um, to the history oh, yeah. of human rights abuses um, that have gone on in, in Palestine uh, leading up to this, in, in both the West Bank and in, and, and in Gaza. And I recognize that there are, um, that uh, Americans sometimes uh, uh, don't understand the differences and um, that sometimes it's not always easy 100% when you're talking about these things to di dig down into all the details. Like obviously uh, settlements in the West Bank is a di is an issue that is not uh, as big of an issue in Gaza Strip while uh, water quality issues is a much bigger issue in Gaza Strip. It's not as big of an issue, still an issue, but not as big of an issue in the West Bank. Wait, what do you think happened to all the settlements in Gaza? What's that? What do you know of the settlements in Gaza? I I don't know off the top of my cuff what you mean. There's been like like fifty plus years of history on that. Israel holds all of its settler colonials in the Great. Um, moving of people, just hitting them out of their houses and throwing them away. Mm -hmm. It did in the last thirty years. It will have to do. 20 more years of what of, of that thousand a year Palestinian to get close to the number of what was happening there. So, mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't, okay. I don't, I do not think that the, at least to the Israeli public, the claims that ending settler colonialism will bring peace have been proven to be wrong, which is partially why I believe that making this a sticking point actually might have detrimental real world. I, I can't agree with that. I can't agree with that. Okay. I'm sorry. I can't agree with you on that one. Um, a, a, a settler colonial project is, is historically one of the most guaranteed ways to incur, to, uh, to, uh, build ill will, um, for very obvious reasons. Um, of not course. just, not just, it, it's a, it is a fundamentally terrorist Listen, project. Nobody, yeah. nobody said that it didn't incur, uh, incur, uh, you just, you just uh, said that, you just said that it's, that it doesn't, it doesn't work to, like, that it doesn't matter to end settler colonialism. That's what you just said. You just said no. that, it, that it doesn't, it doesn't no, fix the not. problem, but that's not, no, that's, I what did you say then? I'm I sorry. Didn't. If I misunderstood you, I apologize, but you maybe you should, you could reword it for me. I am Again, I am talking about a very specific and very practical thing. I am saying that internally, within the Israeli political system, 
the as is used as an example of you have to um, support the settlements or what happened with Aza, where we withdraw, will happen here too. I truly believe that part of the reason this is a huge, huge part in internal Israeli politics, and I do believe that there needs to be some proof that could be counteracted inside Israel. The idea that there is no internal debate to be done in Israel and leftists can't do anything except um, criticize is I, not actually correct. I you were just, very I don't, I don't, I, I think I that, know. um, I think that, how do I, how do I, how do I make this make sense? Um, if if me saying if it oh my god I don't even know how to engage with this because uh, uh, the idea that like a in a manifest destiny esque uh, uh, justification for continuing settlements um, is like the I'm argument that's <laughs> letting this continue is is absurd like it's it's wrong it's it's not it's just wrong it's not just wrong because it's ineffective or whatever it's wrong because no, it's it's horrific because this is a hor horrific inhumane and disgusting <laughs> act that should be denounced that obviously what undeniably b breeds ill will it breeds what bad destiny? blood what destiny what manifest destiny Manifest. Okay, I'm sorry. Maybe maybe you're not familiar with the concept. Manifest. Do you know? Are you familiar, familiar with the American concept of manifest destiny? Yes. Yes. yes I have um, taken my one one year of, of American history. Okay. Which okay, left. Good. I, I I know that it, that was a bit of a, an assumption on my part, just because the concept is very well recognized here. The idea of manifest destiny is basically that. Um, it was a pseudo religious justification for expanding westward. Um, well. that, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so the idea that the idea that um that like these settlements have a right to expand and whatever um like people having that idea in their head um is a problem in and of itself and uh mm -hmm. I I do, I don't yes. think that uh, I don't think but I don't think that like I I don't think that, and no. I'm not saying there's a one to one parallel. I that's why I said it was like it was manifest no. destiny esque. It's like similar to manifest destiny, but um I don't think that like saying okay a lot of Israelis aren't convinced because uh, when we stopped doing it there uh, things didn't get better. That doesn't that doesn't justify the the horrific and inhumane action of settler colonialism. It just doesn't. Like that is it is bad in and of its own, regardless of efficacy towards another end. That's sort of accepting a fascistic frame. And I don't know. I don't. I don't. I. I'm sorry, but I can't I didn't get. Huh? I didn't say otherwise. Okay. I my again. I am talk. You were specifically talking about. You mentioned that by my standards, there needs to be both support for the secular demilitarized portions of Palestinian and Israel. And yes, we desperately need your support. There is no support to this part of the Israeli government or the Israeli politics, and there should be. I'm well, I don't, but I think I think that to a certain degree, that's exactly what what people like myself and other lefties. Now, not all lefties are the same, obviously, but there are a lot of people who are actively uh, who are actively spreading the idea um, uh, and these ideas, and they're they're sh they're showing uh, Netanyahu and his faction for what they are worldwide, which will damage the popularity, which will damage the amount of money that's flowing in, um, and also here in America, there is a ton of us. Who are actively working to limit limit the influence of groups like the uh, like the Heritage Foundation, of uh, uh, those type. Of course, that's. I mean, the Heritage Foundation comes up a lot on my streams. We're not the only ones. But but again, like, it all, was insane. what I'm saying is that none of none of none of what what I think I've talked about and none of the fo none of the calling out of these things uh, I don't think that hurts you said at one point that you felt like it, it could be harmful to our ends I don't think it does I just don't agree with that I don't accept the idea that calling out settler colonialism blat blatant settler colonialism for what it is um, is uh, is 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 counteractive I think it's important I think it's important direct to, to be able to recognize the 
the evil of a current of a current state. That is not the action I have actually uh, marked as counteractives. Those two actions I have uh, marked as counteractives. Lack of the uh, lack of any attempt to engage with the Palestinian population, not through international aid uh, aid organizations, which are problematic for so many reasons. Like in general, I would not trust a, a, a quote unquote Zionist uh, organization aid either. And my section is that yes, there is job to be done within inside Israel, but it does require you to actually understand what the people of Israel are scared of. And you need to understand it, irregardless of whether or not you think that this is a justification. Because my problem is that, yeah, people are, are scared of unjustified crap. That is pretty much the norm here. So like not addressing people's fear, just addressing actual justice will not get you as lo as far as you wish it would. As I, I, wish I it don't would. I don't I don't entirely disagree with you, but um what I actually see overwhelmingly is um only acknowledgement of Israeli fear. Um only. That's basically it. Biden, uh, Biden, Zelensky, all of these, all of these major figures. The overwhelming thing is to only acknowledge the Israeli fear. Is to only acknowledge this, the fear of the terrorist attack, which is, which is feeding in directly to to Netanyahu's goal to use that fear to enact a genocide. That's part of what I'm saying. There's been no point in at least, at least, and I can say this very confidently at multiple points in my in my segment on this. I directly addressed the the. The, the terror of having an attack like that unjustifiably done on innocent citizens. But I also am willing to say the answer is not to do it back to other innocent citizens. That that is what part of the reason why war crimes are uh, uh, are are so heavily fought against because they become uh, retributive and a never ending retri retri a cycle of retribution against innocent people. Um, yeah. But but what I see in American media and beyond um, is nothing but um, deference to the fear uh, uh, of 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 Israeli citizens, which is actively um, which is actively preyed upon to create this project. And yeah. can I tell you something about that? Uh huh. Yeah, not actually a good representation of the fears of the average Israeli. That's true. Seriously. But but. but but in, that I sure, sure. I'm talking, but I'm talking to you about doing internal work in Israel, understanding what the Israelis think in order to offer the people with the power as something that is easier to sell. That um, is all. I, sure. But I, I, that's fine, and I, I don't dis I don't think that that's a bad idea, and I would urge uh, if there are other Isra Israeli viewers, if there are Israeli broadcasters in my audience, which there very well may be, I'm not 100 percent sure. I have quite a there decent amount of people here right now, but uh, I I do think that obviously there's a struggle and a conversation to be had within Israel. But I live in America and I speak to an American audience, and so my job is to uh, at least the way that I see my job and my my position here is to detail, uh, make sense of, and give people the arguments to be able to outline what the type of moral atrocity that's going on to build up to build up a movement against supporting the government that is enacting these things, which is the right wing government currently in control of the Israeli state. So, like, I have limited access to uh, internal Israeli politics. What I do have access to is a, however small or large, influence on American I, politics. Look, I can hook you up with some, like, Israeli anarchists if you're looking to learn more from, like, actual, like, underground activists. Um, totally. I would be totally happy to talk with Israeli um, Israeli anarchists, of course. No no doubt about that. Um, so like I just don't think you... I just don't think that I don't think that I've uh, I, I, I don't think that I've failed in my messaging here. I think that my messaging has been um, in fact, I'm quite confident in my messaging today in what I had to say about this issue and the way that I chose to outline it and what I chose to highlight, um, which is 
by the way, in direct opposition. Obviously, I'm fighting an uphill battle here in the United States when the Democratic president, the uh, 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 you know, is willing to 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 just be like, yeah, uh, you know, Israel can do whatever it needs to to fix this problem, even if it means fucking genociding people. Can I go on a tiny rant about this? Sure, go ahead. There is one thing that the left can do, and it refuses to do so in America, just America. Okay. Wait, it's okay. Usual to accept international aid for what it is. International aid is a cover to leash Israel. If right now America removes all of its international aid, the first thing Israel does is sells seven MF 16s to China. And then it will proceed to arm every Arab country that the Americas really don't want to be armed. Right now, those aid money were the only thing that preventing from Israel from building its own weapon manufacturing. Get on the, you need to get people on the committees that talk about those aids. So they would put pro-Palestinian uh, policies as an attachment to the aid. Getting rid of the aid would be disastrous. Okay, so I see what you're saying, but I well, I don't think I I don't I, okay I don't I don't advocate for uh, directly ending any aid whatsoever. In fact, I don't think I talked about that. I don't. That's not usually the type of stuff that I talk about. But I hear what you're trying to say. What you're trying to say, um, and. I don't know enough uh, about the the economy of Israel to be able to to verify a hundred percent whether this is correct or not. But I just want to see if I'm characterizing your argument correctly. What you're saying is is that ending aid to Israel would force Israel into a position of manufacturing its own arms, uh, and would result in the selling of arms to dangerous factions in in the Middle East. And so, therefore, what should be advocated for is stipulations to aid that directly assists Palestine. Yes, yes. Uh, by the way, it's not that I'm saying that Israel will have no choice. Israel wants to do this. Israel wants to arm the Middle East. Happily so. America doesn't want the Middle East armed. I personally agree. But the situation... Abbas didn't know about the Abrahamic Accords, do you? Uh, the, sorry, what were they? The Abrahamic Accords. Abra Abrahamic Accords? Um, I don't know all the details of them. Uh, I've, I've probably heard of them, but I, I don't know. I couldn't summon them up off the top of my head. It's a massive peace accord between Israel and currently, if I'm not mistaken, 16 or 15 Arab countries, Morocco, Libya, uh, Egypt, Egypt and uh, Jordan we already had. We had an accord with Lebanon. Okay, okay, yes, Israel, I am familiar with this. This was this was under Trump, right? Yeah, this was, 20, this was 2020, 2020, just before Trump left office. Okay, I, I, I know, uh, yes, I, I'm, I'm looking at this now, and, uh, okay, so but where the, are you going, where are you going, where, where is this, sorry, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I just wanted to make sure that I knew that we were talking about the right things. This is the 2020 Abra yes. Abraham Accords? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Those are Do you know why they happened? Um why? That sounds like a big question, but why? You tell me why. Because 30% of Israeli arm, uh, uh, armament GP, uh, um, armament money comes from selling guns to uh, guns to, to those countries. Mm -hmm. And literally none of them stipulated a thing about Palestinians in any of the accords. Well, yeah, because that was done under Donald Trump, and, and Donald Trump is, is is a fascist. So that totally makes no. sense why that would be the case. No, the Arab world does not care about Palestinians. That is one of the biggest mistakes that I see the Americans do. The sure, Palestinians but... okay, are yeah, not I... supported by anybody in the Arab world. Uh, yeah, I mean that tends to be kind of true worldwide, right? Like, um, like most of the time when a country has a, uh, uh, you know, is in. I mean, you could even argue that with with America and Ukraine that uh, that the United the the American government doesn't like love Ukrainians. They're they're interested in the geopolitical position, and of course that's 
always going to be true when you're talking about geopolitics. Uh, nations act, states act out of their own interests, not out of love of random people. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, Trump is never going to Trump is never going to stipulate anything like that. Trump is is a he doesn't give a fucking shit. Uh, Donald Trump That's is like point. happy with this type of shit. My point is there is already on the ground very very big network of economic collaboration between Israel's and countries who would happily run over the Palestinian populations with their own tanks if given the possibility. It happened. Sure. Now, that puts the whole idea of if we isolate Israel even more than Palestinians will be better. And this, that's my problem with it. Okay. Um, no. I don't know. The reason um, advocate yeah, that, that, of I would have to think about that particular that particular outcome more. Um, as far as uh, the 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 nitty gritty of of how aid is sent and what stipulations are on aid, I don't really have an impact on that. Um, I have a very limited impact, I should say. Um, the only thing that I can really do is is advocate for uh, uh, for as much opposition to the right-wing fascism in Israel as I possibly can. Um, and uh, and also, I can, I can urge my viewers to unilaterally denounce the disgusting behavior that has been meted out on innocent people over and over again that is currently, in as we speak, as we talk about this right now on my stream, that is currently being meted out on innocent people under the justification of like an, a war on terror. Um, yeah, that, that's that's what I want people to pay attention to. That's what I can do. That's what I, I'm able to do. Now, it is true that um, there are probably politicians who might be in a better position to um, to do that. But most, I mean, the politicians I, I support the most strongly um, are are ones who who have good stances on Palestine, who want to empower Palestine, who want to empower good forces in Palestine and not dangerous ones. Yeah, get them into committees. I mean, if I don't have to try. I can't appoint people to committees, but I can do my best to have an upstream effect. I'm like talking about we want this person in this committee because it's it's the place where the work gets done, and there's not a lot of political streamers who are like, I need everybody to write to their congressman to tell them to put this person in this committee. Well, because that's hard, that's really difficult information to keep track of, and it moves incredibly fast. This is one of the problems with electoralism um, that I've talked about, which is that um, the, the, the pace at which things move and happen, most people can't even respond to in real time. Um, the reason why, part of the reason why um, it's so difficult uh, to, to like actually enact any sort of democratic change in the United States is because it's so complicated and because the focus is so fixated on on national and federal politics um, with very very few people actually able to focus or garner attention um, to local or or time sensitive situations that a lot of stuff just goes um, goes on and happens without any input from people at all it, it's it's a downside of, of the electoral process is that uh, People have limited lives. They have limited time. They have limited attention. They can't like shit gets missed all the time, or stuff that people don't even know about. Because, um, like, I mean, most people like don't even can't. Most people, the average person, doesn't know how every single committee in their state, or or even how committees in the Senate are formed, because they don't really have any impact on that, and they don't really have anyone who can teach them that. They vote for uh, when their elections come up. Uh, they'll vote for people that they think they support it's fairly uh difficult and obviously the uh my job as a as a youtuber um being fairly limited is to get people to think about these things so that when these issues come up they make the right decision um it's pretty hard to actually keep up with every single appointment that's going on um and even know when it's happening and also some of them you don't actually even have a say in any way. You could write as many letters as you want to um, to your to your uh, representative or whatever, and they might not listen to you. And there's a good chance they won't, um, especially if they're in an entrenched position. So, uh, uh, again, I do think it's valuable to uh, I think it's very valuable to uh, spend time um, 
understanding the uh, moral stakes of an issue like what we were talking about, the news that, that, that we were talking about before, and also the situation as a whole, and also knowing how to, how to, um, how to see when uh, uh, misleading statements are being made. Like, for example, um, obviously, uh, I would prefer Biden to win um, over Donald Trump. Uh, but I also want people to be able to recognize when Biden does something wrong so that they can acknowledge the limitations of the Democratic Party and fight for something larger. And in order to do that, I have to keep, I have to be able to educate them on those issues. I have to be able to talk about these issues so that, so that my viewers can grapple with these topics when they're talking to somebody else and not fall for propaganda, if that makes sense. Honestly? This is a classic theoretic pragmatic debate that I don't actually think is solvable. Look, I don't find any fault in your moral reasoning. Mm -hmm. Okay? Sure. Like, this is not what I take gripe with. And this is why the, the, the conversation with Wash was so horrible because, like, no, I don't want Palestinian children and I don't. Like, we don't need to get to the nitty gritty of the situation in Gaza to, to say that uh, two million people held under oppression is not a good idea. But we also kind of can't say that an Arab majority scaring Israelis is fear mongering, considering the number. I Look, mean, I believe. The Arab majority, I mean, I do think that's, I do think that's kind of fear mongering. And, um, I. I mean, wait, so you're saying like, uh, when you say, when you, wait, wait, hold on, just to be clear, just to be clear, when you say, when you say an Arab majority, you're saying like, if, uh, if Palestinians are given like, uh, uh, basically, um, All Palestinians within the occupied territory are given currently Israeli citizenship, Israel is going to go from Israel, from Jewish majority to Palestinian majority, number one. So from Israeli majority, right? Not Jewish majority, or what? You, you, when you said Jewish yes. majority, did you mean like, is that what you meant? No, I mean majority. I don't mean Israeli majority. The problem is that we already have a twenty percent population of people who, mm, about seventy percent, identify as Palestinian. So if more Palestinians would come, there would be a Palestinian the Palestinian majority within what is currently the state of Israel. And claiming that this is fear-mongering just doesn't add up number-wise. There, as you said, two million Palestinians in Gaza, two million okay. Palestinians but in- But first of all, uh, it, it, it is, it is fear-mongering. It is fear-mongering. It is objectively fear-mongering. And the reason why it's fear-mongering is because it's saying, I am scared of this group of people um, that we have uh, complete military occupation over, and that's why we need to keep doing complete military occupation over these people. It is a what? it's a self licking ice cream what? cone of genocide of, of 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 apartheid justification. See, this is the stuff that happened in um this is the stuff that happened what? in your conversation with Vosh that I was uh that that I think a lot of people not just me but a lot of people um their alarm bells go off because those people are people whether you're scared of them or not those are people and they are being treated as a second class citizen which is a bad thing okay and, and it is and also stop 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 this is literally what i'm talking about where in the fact that there's going to be a palestinian majority and it scares israeli people because let me tell you what scares me what scares me is being under the control of the hamas government which decapitates people like me. If the if we have were you under the have you perhaps the considered have you perhaps considered that the Hamas government would not be able to be in power um, if the if exactly like I said oh my God in my entire segment that the Hamas government would not be popular or be able to seize power if the situation was not one of um, of people living in horrific conditions and having no uh, no um, uh, other uh, no path yeah. to power whatsoever have you okay. considered that this those that their ability their ability to create extremists would be hugely deflated by treating people like humans and giving them other paths that don't involve violence but you see this is this is this is why i think the conversation that i had 
uh, is so important because this is how fascists work. They justify subjugation based on on trumped up fears. Those fears create uh, ill will. Those fears then justify further mistreatment. And it and it wait hold on listen and the, and the power funnels up to the fascists. their own base. What? I do not want to be under a government who punishes its own LGBTQ population by decapitation. Who I want says to you're be going strong. to be under that government? How? Who says you're going to be under that government? That is seriously. Yes, seriously. Who, who says you're going to be people, under that government? The people who claim that Israel should just give up to the Hamas and then. Like who's I'm not claiming who's fucking saying saying Israel gives up to Hamas. What people are saying is stop fucking uh, 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 stop fucking oppressing an entire group of people, uh, which only makes the situation worse, which only empowers the people you're supposedly afraid of. It's c the collective punishment is the problem. The collective punishment drives people into the hands of the extremists. There is a ton of people. You yourself admitted that there are a ton of people who don't support. Uh, Hamas. Most Those people, people, if you were, if you treated them like humans. <laughs> oh my dear God. Oh. Not as my neighbor. Not as my. If there is currently a secular Arab leader uh, that is chosen by an Arab majority to be the head of an Arab majority country, and they Have support you gay. That the, the, the wind, I, the wind, the wind in Hamas's sails would be would be sucked out. If a even a small amount of of improvement was made uh, towards the absolute that heinous situation, that is unfortunately not true. It doesn't mean that the situation doesn't need to be improved. But and and this is unfortunately morally based solutions do not always work out. No, right now it is. You're just literally you're literally saying that we should be immoral. Uh, for 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 the greater good, and the greater if good one, is the greater yeah, good is justifying fascistic fear mongering. If more people get to be alive in the end of the process, then yes, and I do mean more people, as in Palestinian and Israelis. I want people to be alive. I... More just I can't believe this is where this conversation has ended, like or or, or has come to. Because obviously I'm not quite done, but I can't believe this is what we've come to after all that we were talking about. Because um, this is literally just a cold Machiavellian justification of fascism. I'm not talking about war. Fascists will you literally talk about this. They will literally be like, "Oh, the degenerate people. We need to. We need the, the reason we must do horrible acts is because we must keep the degenerate people uh, under control. Because if we do, if we don't, then they'll undo civilization, and which will cause horrible things to happen. So we must accept a an incredible evil in order to make the world a better place. It is. It is just. This is just cold, unquestionable fascistic logic. You are saying that. You are saying right now that even though it is immoral to keep a massive amount of people in a apartheid situation, that you should keep doing it because the because no, you I think that the alternative is that if you don't, I then a bunch of no scary a bunch of scary people will take over your country. When in reality, you no. already admit that Hamas is barely clinging to power, and that if they were if Wait, if, if the justifications Hamas has, if the justifications that Hamas has, um, do you think it's that? Do you think that every person who looks the other way at Hamas or every person who uh, who is willing to uh, uh, assist Hamas does so out of just pure is hate for for Israel? Or do you think perhaps no. that they do so out of uh, out of the idea that they they have no other option and some of them are just like, They're fuck it. The They're afraid of the Hamas. The Hamas you, is incredibly oh, oh, wait, that's even more to my argument. If they're afraid of Hamas, that gives even more reason to say that Hamas's support would that Hamas's support would dissolve if they didn't if there was something else to give them a a, a leg up against Hamas. If the people of Palestine were granted the rights, then and 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 powers, then they would. But then you this is why this is talking this is this conversation is so mind bending. It's so mind bending. Uh, only one who claims these things, and this was the case in Russia. No, I did not say we need to continue apartheid because this, you this, this, this. just because did. I'm sorry, you just did that. 
You just no. said that. You just said when I yeah. said uh, you could that by by restoring human rights to Palestinian oh. people, you said no. Israel is, Israelis have a, a good reason. I do not want to be beheaded by Hamas. So it, sometimes, and you literally said sometimes we I the morally saying. sorry. I, hold on a second. I need yeah. to get this out. You said sometimes the moral answer is not always the correct answer. Yes. You did and justify it. You are you justifying apartheid. You are downplaying no, and justifying it two in one. It's like a no, one-two no, punch. No. And then you say you don't, but you did. No, no. I can tell you what they do mean, but you seem to be talking for me fairly well on your own. I don't think I'm, I'm talking. Sorry. I think what's happening is that I'm getting bullshitted. And that's one of the things that, no, that has made me no. angry in this portion. We had a very peaceful no. conversation up to this point. And then we get to this point, and when you say, well, actually, uh, uh, th it's not fear-mongering to say that the, uh, that, that the Palestinian people are, uh, right. are, are going to take over and have a, a, a majority and that they'll use that to cut our heads off. And I go, no, that's fear-mongering. And then you go, I didn't, I, oh, no, I'm not. It's not fear-mongering. What? What? Whoa. Back off like a million miles. Yes, if you try to find in every single thing I say justification for Israel, we will not be able to have this conversation. I have not I'm done that at all in this conversation. What I have, what I have gotten to here, what I have gotten to, no, no, I'm sorry. What I've gotten to here is a frustration with some of your statements that you that you will will make a statement on, and then when I call it what it is, you'll say that's not what it is. I, you know why? Because you never actually ask me to clarify any of the statements. You just tell me what I. I've mean. asked you to. I've given you. I've asked you to clarify all along here. And then when I say, when I say, hold on a second, that is this, then you, then you get like, uh, I don't know, you get mad and act like I'm doing something wrong when I say, hey, hold on a second, that's not correct. You claim that I support the, the continuum of apartheid, even though I said that I don't. And then you say you that, said that you're... You, you, you said that you don't when I put it in the words okay. apartheid. But then when we were talking about it before, you explicitly in your words, when I said uh, it is, it is fear mongering and it gives power to Hamas to, to, to maintain an apartheid state, to maintain a second class citizenship stop. situation. Wait, stop. 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 stop, wait, stop, wait. I said that, I said all these things. I said that, that uh, keeping Palestinians as second class citizens and denying them the ability to have full voting rights uh, empowers Hamas. Then afterwards yes. you said, uh, well, I don't want to give power to people who want to cut my head off. Sometimes the moral yes. decision is not the right decision. Yes. I, that is justifying apartheid. But when I tell you it's justifying apartheid, you go, no, uh, it is not. You just refuse to acknowledge it for what it is. Can I explain myself there? Okay, go ahead. Let's hear your explanation. It's very simple. The Hamas is morally justified to bombing Israel. That's it. There's like, the moral justification here is not morally justified to kidnap civilians. It's morally justified to bomb Israel. I'm saying this. I have actual PTSD from being in one of those constantly bombed towns. Trust me, the PTSD does not carry you under Iron Dome. However, and this is the important part, I do not believe that this is the best way to end this, even if Hamas is morally justified. That's what I mean when I say morals and practices don't get along. Because morally, you are correct, but there are moral factors which makes your con conclusions based solely on morality to be ineffectual in solving this. I, I, I don't, I, I, I don't think that that is a valid argument here. There were, um, in, in, I'm going to make an analogy to America here. Um, when slavery still existed in America, there was a number of slave revolts. Some of them were violent. Some of them were horrifically violent, in fact. Um, and what? and uh, and um, a southern the, the 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 Confederate states 
often fear-mongered that if we uh, if we stopped having these people in slavery, they would just kill us. They would they would do a genocide on us. They would put us into slavery just like we've done to them. That's what that, that was what was said all the time. And and guess what? It's always been a myth. It's always been a fear-mongering used to justify maintaining an immoral structure, an inhumane structure. The the act of the the apartheid situation in Israel is not just immoral. It is so immoral that it is a stain on the history of the world. It is that bad. So, uh, practicality aside, um, if 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 the uh, if uh, the situation is 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 that if the situation is so bad then it has to be grappled with the fact that a disgustingly immoral situation has been going on forever and the only answer is to put an end I to it because otherwise it will forever bleed. Can I be honest? It's true that the disgustingly immoral situation been happening forever. That has, at least in the history of this area, has never been a factor. I'm sorry, can you say that again? We can agree that the disgustingly horrific situation has been going on forever in the relations of Israeli and uh, Palestinians. This specific one has been going on for, you know, uh, uh, you know, let's see, the Nakba was in 1948. Um, but yeah, the apartheid situation has been going on. It's been getting worse over time in some ways, and it's uh, and it's been going back and forth, but at least since the 60s. So there's a pretty uh, pretty good framework for how long it's been going on, this particular it's iteration true. of it. You're absolutely right in this. I just don't see ethical considerations to be a viable way of politically motivating anything. Um, like, if if somebody is, was to uh, say to me, if somebody was to t to say to me, I don't want to treat a Palestinian person like human, like humans. I don't want Palestinians to be treated like humans because I'm afraid um, they might get revenge on me. I would go, that's insane, oh, and that's a you it. problem, and I would fight I against that mentality as much as possible. Me. I would fight against that I am so much. The Palestinians will get revenge on me. Look, I really just took problem with Vash's lack of knowledge of the Israeli demographic. Seriously. Okay. That is my problem here. But like, listen, I don't, I don't like that you characterize me as somebody who supports this because I don't think that the solution that, that uh, runs around the morality issue is the most feasible one. Um, That's not how supporting stuff is. I I don't. I don't. I. I think that's that's weaselly. There are lots of ways to um, uh, support something. If you are saying we shouldn't end this this heinous apartheid situation because I okay. because of yeah. fear mongering, and then you acknowledge. Okay. I mean, you yourself did say at one point that you didn't want your head cut off by Hamas as a justification yeah. for why. So I. I don't. A hundred percent. I don't know. You've said you do. You said you don't. I don't entirely know. Can I say something? That's what uh -huh. I'm saying. You keep saying it's a justification for it. No, it's not a justification for anything. It's a fear that I think you should be aware of. But I think that the next step is oppressing the Palestinian. For one thing, it has proven remarkably ineffective from keeping Hamas from beheading their gays. Well, that's because, okay. but that's also because um, Israel doesn't care about uh, Hamas gay people. Uh, they don't care yeah. about Palestinian gay people. Yeah, um, Israel. I mean, uh, Israel as a state doesn't seem to care about Palestinian people at all. Um, it's not like it's not like Israel is like um, oppressing them out of out of the um, out of the uh, uh, out of the goodness of their heart. They're doing it because this is a way yeah. to maintain power. It's a it's a path to a form of power. They're doing this because everybody here is terrified to their core. You seriously underestimate how much actual collective drama runs around in Israel, of which the Holocaust is literally only one. I don't think People... I do. I don't think I do. I think that I am just willing to say uh, that the, the tr that, that a, a trauma response is not 
at all. It's unequivocally not a justification to inflict it on someone else. It isn't. No, but it and is important to understand isn't. if you actually care about but them. At no point have I not understood the fears. But guess what? This is an argument that this is an argument, by the way, that people use to um, to, to to hand wave critiques of racism in the United States. When you, when you say, it's not okay to be racist, it's not okay to be racist to black people, then some people will go, yeah, but can't you understand why they're afraid? And then you, and then you go, um, yes, but it's not correct regardless. And they go, you're just insensitive, but it's not. It's just pointing out that you have to be able to move on uh, to not to, to a position where you're not inflicting the same horrors on other people or similar horrors on other people. Um, trauma is a real thing that lots of people suffer from, but that doesn't mean that you don't have to take a strong stance against behaving, act, acting out that trauma to inflict it on other people. You have to be able to do that. You have to be able to say, I understand why you're afraid, but first of all, the fears are not fair. Um, you are unjustly being prejudiced against an entire group of people, the, ma the, the vast majority of whom have not harmed you in any way. And secondly- And you don't um, mean anything. Huh? Just to confirm, the majority of Palestinians currently in both Gaza and the West Bank did not harm me in any way will mm -hmm. not harm me in any way, Correct. do not wish to harm me in any way. And if a genocide will happen, there's a good chance they will let me hide in their houses. Right. Okay. And, and what I'm saying from that is that, that when someone points out that it is fear-mongering, therefore, to uh, to uh, 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 delay or hold back or disagree with the uh, granting of fair, basic human rights um, to these people. Uh, and the response is then, oh, well, you know, but people have real trauma and you're just not understanding it. No, I'm understanding it. I'm just pointing out that the conclusion that is being built out of that trauma is not correct and is not fair and is, is creating, is, is perpetuating the problem. I That's... just don't think that saying this is helping any of the situation, to be honest. I, but that is... I don't know by... how else you can... Um, I don't know how else uh, you can move forward without being able to at least say, this is the stance we're taking, that this trauma cannot be a justification for, uh, uh, for a, a moral atrocity. That this fear which it is fear mongering. It is fear, it is instilled fear. People are being told yeah. to be scared. Um, and they are they are tying events together in a way that is I not correct. Nobody it's understandable, but it's not correct. It's my husband got bombed. Nobody tells me to be scared. Um, I the rockets made me scared, but um look. How should I put this? The reason I blame this, uh, you keep saying what I'm saying is not justification, but it is a very important block on the path to peace. You need to somehow address Israelis. And I know you said that you see only support for Israeli sphere, but what Israelis see? Because the only people Israelis see supporting them are the kind of phrases everybody here is afraid of, i.e. religious nudges. Look, Israel right now has way more problem with religious people and religious people. And secular people tensions than it does with Palestinians. Seriously. It's like... I, I don't disagree, but... It makes so I don't disagree with do... that portion, I should state. I don't disagree with that portion. However, it still doesn't change the fact that a that uh, you will not you can't make progress by coddling um, by coddling a to a trauma that has turned toxic ever. Um, you can't you can't grant ground to that. Like in America, you can't grant ground to um, KKK members 
who uh, want to genocide black people um, because they ha because a black person um, robbed their house and also they grew up in a house full of racists. Like you can't grant ground to that. You have to be able to look at them and go, no, your path is not the answer, and I will not, uh, I will not pretend that it's the answer. Um, you have to be able to do that. And that applies to your country as well. That applies to, and, and guess what? If it's not, then what the only answer is, the answer is that they are, that those are the people who are holding back peace. Um, Listen, and this happened in the United States too. When, when uh, uh, it literally came to the Civil War, when the when the people when when it, you know obviously there were complicated reasons for the Civil War, but also when the fact that it was like okay we can't we clearly can't uh, get people to give up slavery, um, you know, uh, then th there is only one way, which is we have to duke it out. And f and 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 uh, if that's the case, if someone who is in the in the position is refusing to overcome their own trauma and is torturing somebody else, then that person, the only rational path is to see that person as an unequivocal uh, bad actor, as an unequivocal enemy. So those people in your country who can't see past their own fears and and are arguing out of fear. By the way, fascists. By the way, fascists. Fascists and Nazis through all of history, fear is there is one of their main tools. They use fear to justify heinous acts. You have to be able to stand up against it and say no. This is not the right path. Uh, acting out of fear in this way um, is not okay. It's that simple. It has to be done. And if you can't, it's that simple. What's that? You really think that that is that simple, that that is what is lacking in the period. People staying and saying, no, I shall not, or whatever the hell. Like, do you really think that that is the main problem here? Um, I think it's a part of the problem, and it's, the, it's something that you brought up as a part of the problem. So I'm engaging with you, what you've brought up. You've said that tons and tons of Israelis are, fe are, are act out of fear and do not want to grant ri rights to Palestinians because of that fear. And I'm saying that fear needs to be overcome. It needs to be aggressively overcome. It needs to be called out for what it is that is irrational and unjust, that is perpetuating evil in the world. By the type of, it is not being overcome by the type of rhetoric I hear from you. If you believe that this fear needs to be overcome, you are not doing anything towards that goal. I'm uh, sorry. If you say so. This is not your focus at the moment, which is absolutely fair. Which is absolutely fair. But yeah, I want to point out that yes, I do believe that there is a very clear. Look, again, I have no actual moral qualms with you. It's a practical qualm. It's the question of, okay, so Israel will, let's say, open the other street, and then there will be more, and then. And before you say that's fear-mongering, that would happen last time we tried. And not counting for the fact that it has been tried and failed, is not a moral stance. It just makes you look uninformed. Mm. I get it. So um, you know, you tried to give these, you tried to give these these second class citizens their rights, and they just couldn't behave after you tortured them for sixty years. And so you know, we just have to keep doing the immoral act. I just, I can't, or I can't agree with this position. I think this is a heinous position. And um, also, uh, if I were in your position, you've spent a lot of time telling me what I need to do as somebody who's talking about this and just talking about the um, the moral I, issue at hand. But honestly, on your side of the issue. If, you, if I was surrounded by people who um, were so irrationally afraid of of the people nearby that, that they were willing to justify a mass uh, a, a massive genocidal actions over the course of years, I would say I would I would have to say that I think that those people would become my ex my explicit enemies, and maybe it would even go so far if I was if I was sitting in the point where my house was getting uh, was getting hit with fucking missiles and rockets because uh, of the policies enabled by people who can't over overcome their fear and feel the need to continually uh, uphold an oppressive uh, regime, uh, I think that that would call for extreme action on the part of people like yourself, um, that those people should be, uh, should be uh, uh, taken and stripped of their power by any means necessary. Cool. 
I'm just imagining what would happen this. Seriously? The future you're describing is a bloodbath. That is my only problem with it. It uh, sounds great. There's a bloodbath right now. Newsflash. There's a bloodbath right now. It's going to get worse. I want it to get better. But you say that everything I say in order to make start better is justifying the bad that already happened. A lot of what you said in the first half was not, but a lot of what you said in this second half of the conversation absolutely is. You're downplaying and you're making excuses for why uh, a horrific and one-sided uh, humanitarian nightmare is being enacted on an entire group of people. So yes, I do think you've done that. And I don't, I, I think you're going to keep denying it wow. and you won't acknowledge it, but I think you have. And I think also that you've granted undue yeah. charity. Uh, hold on, hold on. I think you've granted, I think you've granted undue charitability um, to people who are uh, literally acting out of, of fascistic, uh, fascistic reactionary behavior that you make excuses for them. You say, but they have trauma, but they have this, but they have that. Well, that's true about fucking, uh, uh, about fucking KKK members and neo-Nazis and war hawks of all types. That's just true. Okay, you said, you're the one who said that you should probably uh, uh, strengthen the Israeli secular left as well. I sure, just tried absolutely. To yeah. You're not going to get a lot, a lot of ways if every time somebody tells you these are the things I'm dealing with, you're saying by the fact that you're bringing it, you're justifying a part. This is victim, this is victim blaming, is what you're doing. Yeah, you're, you, are, you are quite literally, you are quite things. literally saying, you are quite literally saying, oh, um, yeah, the, their fifis got hurt. The people who are actively su su uh, uh, supporting a, um, hold on, hold on. No, I'm sorry. You, you always do this. Every time I start to talk, you start talking over me and it's so frustrating. Um, but what you are saying is that people who are actively, you, first of all, You've said a couple of contradictory things in this conversation, one of which was you say that most people don't support this uh, this ridiculous um, uh, Netanyahu regime. If that's the case, no. then uh, then that that actually means that my position is stronger, that the people who the majority of people who currently exist should take extreme action to overcome the minority that support Netanyahu, the psychopaths who support absolute fascism. So and secondly, uh, I, in my in my own country, there is a there is a cult of people that follow Donald Trump, and it is not my responsibility to pander to their deranged fantasies. These these people engage in all kinds of insane fear mongering, and it, it is not only condescending, but it's ineffectual to not be able to go. That is fucking crazy. Because here's the thing that you're not even thinking about. The other thing that you're not thinking oh, about really? is the fact that when you, especially if you're a public figure like me, when I say that's fucking crazy it shows other people who are watching who aren't necessarily um in that position they see their person and they go oh wow maybe i am being fucking crazy maybe this is fucking evil i'm seeing somebody effectively explain why a position of acting out trauma in order to do genocide is wrong that this is a fascistic urge the of acting out trauma in order doing genocide is wrong also, the fact that he's wrong is not the thing that's going to stop the genocide. Nobody said that just the fact that it's wrong is going to stop it. What I'm saying is, is that not you do not gain any points by pretending that it's less wrong or by coddling the fig the feelings of people who are who actively try who actively try to um uh okay. to downplay it or to justify what? it. Even worse. I do not have any other citizenship as the majority of Israelis have. I, look, you cannot say that you want to talk to Israelis, but also refuse to listen to anything except, yes, apartheid is bad from them. Just on the understanding level, you don't... Your perception of my of my positions and conversation is very convenient. It's very convenient that you that that at every juncture, when I say what you are doing is this thing, you then go, you just won't listen to them. I listen to plenty, and also in my even segment, I acknowledge the 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 justified fears, but I also strongly take a spine pilled stance of saying it is not okay. Mm -hmm 
to use fear no, to, to justify people. genocide. And yes, apartheid is a big fucking deal. Genocide is a big fucking deal. And you can't just no look shit. the other way. Do you think I would be in, uh, arguing with you if I thought it wasn't a big deal? Listen, I don't entirely I know. Uh, listen, you meet all kinds of strange people on the internet. I don't entirely know all of your motivations, okay? I can't possibly. I can directly. I can tell you directly what my motivations are. You are right. You are absolutely right. The world is full of people who would throw the Palestinians under the bus. The Palestinians have literally one supporter in the world right now. They're losing all of their traditional supporters in the Arab world, and they have one supporter in the world right now. You know who? Who? Oh. American leftists. American leftists. You are these people, only way, you are the only group that to do anything there. And guess I am what? not doing The way that I win, the way that I win, the way that we win, the way that we improve this situation is not by folding to bad logic and, and folding to bad morality and bad moral judgments. It's by being strong and saying this is not okay. This is not okay and we won't brook uh, uh, equivocation on it. You don't win by weakening your own position. You don't convince more Americans to become American lefties. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You don't convince, you do not convince more Americans my fucking god you do not convince more americans to become lefties by uh by uh, uh uh by by collapsing on your moral stances by 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 giving by 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 watering down your positions on behalf of the people who are who are uh uh giving out propaganda to the opposite you what don't do that. that That's not how it works. It's just not. It doesn't work that way. You don't. It just like just like how um, you don't. You you will not win um, by being nice to uh, to a neo Nazi. If you have a conversation with a neo Nazi and you play nice with them, they'll run circles around you and they'll play games because it's not serious to them. The way that you win, the way that you show people that your position is strong, is by beating them is by showing them that they are wrong, by showing other people that they are wrong, by undermining their fake position of strength and showing that they are fearful and weak and acting out of fear. And when you do that, more people will rally to your cause, which means more people will support the uh -huh. cause, which means more people uh -huh. will push back against the bad things. You don't get there by, uh, by, by going, oh, maybe the answer is more apartheid because too many people are scared. Can I be you honest? Do the answer is apartheid because more people are scared. Also, the answer is not what you said. Like, I'm sorry, you are just wrong that the solution to this thing is just something. It has never worked, and it, quite frankly, if just something is going to be this the is, this is incredible. Your conclusion defense, is, is your conclusion is that this is fucking chest thumping. That is insane to me. And I completely understand. Uh, I, I I completely understand. I do why... not want an apartheid. I do not want genocide. I do not want Hamas in power. Those, by the way, are not actually contradictory, as you yourself has mentioned before. Those are not contradictory. You know who else, in El who else is the Hamas in power? Great chunk of Gaza. I'm sorry. Uh... <laughs> I don't I don't even know what we're talking about at this point. I'm saying that your insistence that not wanting the Hamas in power anywhere equals support of genocide is factually incorrect. And my problem is that you think that that is so fucking weasley. That is so fucking no, weasley. Not. It is so fucking weasley because that is not even what you said before. This is this is the other thing. I got this from your uh, people. People from my audience are gonna after this. People from my audience are gonna also watch your conversation with Vosh and see you doing the same thing, where uh, you'll be confronted with something you just said, and then you'll weasel out of it all of a sudden and change the wording and completely misrepresent what you actually said before. Look, I'm listen. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna put this here because I don't think we're making any more progress at this point. Um, uh, Why? Are you can you explain to me the contradiction? You said you're going to I fight think, that. I think it's very good if it's true that you don't that you don't support the things uh, like like apartheid and uh, genocide. That's that's very very good. Um, 
uh, but also uh, I think gonna... that I think that you're serially I'm... unable to acknowledge when you've said one thing um, and that you will go back and misrepresent things uh, that my the idea the idea that you could come to my position that my position is chest thumping is fucking insane to me after the conversation that we've had it's fucking deranged I said that what you described as the best course of action is basically just something, but ooh, that is a semantics. Look, I wish you all the well. You know what? If your way works, then maybe we will get peace here. I don't mind. I'm not married to my cynicism being the solution to everything. But if somebody seriously wants to support somebody, they need to look into the situation beyond this because unfortunately the amount of non-moral factors here outweighs the moral ones but this is, this is the thing that you've died on because it's crazy the beginning of the the beginning of this segment you had not a single factual issue that i was wrong on there hasn't been a single factual thing that's actually come up here the only thing that you've said the yes. only thing that the entire split in this conversation came around uh, came around f the topic of fear mongering and whether or not that was accurate or not. What I stated in my segment, what I've stated in here, and what I've demonstrated is that I actually understand the topic that I'm talking about very well. I just don't agree with the idea that we should we should uh, we should go easy on or that we should uh, that we have to sit there and look the other Would way when something heinous me? is going on. Okay, I don't believe Wait. that. I don't think that uh, that it is acceptable. Can I, can I just can give my five cents? First of all, yes, nobody expects you to sit back and, and take it easy in the Israeli government. That's also not what I offered. You want an actual good source of support that we can both agree are people who probably really need the support right now? Hit me. There is a Israeli Arab organization that it is part of the LGBT organization. In all likelihood, I have not verified this, in all likelihood, they're going to be the one that's going to be um, taking care of Palestinian refugees like visa application, get out of the country application, ECT. They're tiny, they're underfunded, and I will happily send you a link, a link to their Facebook. I would I appreciate think, think, that so I can take a look at it. I would. I hope this is something we can agree on. That would be a positive outcome from this conversation. Seriously, if I can get your community to support uh, LGBT people in Gaza, I, I, this entire fight was worth it. A hundred percent. I don't. I don't think there was any uh, doubt of that. This is a topic that we've revisited as a community multiple times, and there has always been extreme and vocal support for 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 LGBTQ people in Gaza. Uh, though, of course, I will always welcome a, a another uh, uh, hopefully good uh, uh, organization that people can put money towards. I would absolutely, obviously appreciate that. Um, Thank but you. I think I, I think we've reached the the end of our productive conversation. Then. Okay, uh, can I just say something uh, before we go? Unrelated. Uh, yes, go ahead. Please um, give though my regards. It's been probably mistreated by the internet for absolutely no reason. That's true. Like, yes. For the love of God, leave the poor thing alone. Well, I, I will say that, that this ending has been very satisfying. I appreciate you giving support to Doe. It's true. It has been mistreated. And I, 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 I want to say that I did I do think that we were able to talk about some issues productively, even though I still disagree with some aspects of this. And uh, uh, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, maybe, maybe at some point uh, as this issue develops, we will have an opportunity to revisit this and whatever. But uh, um, oh, I'd be very happy um, if you can just get my the, this sort of thing so I can send you the links. Um, sure. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I see. Just... Okay, there. You're added. All right. Um, thank you for coming on. Uh, I do appreciate you being willing to engage on this topic, uh, regardless of disagreements. Uh, I, I do prefer being able to actually hash things out and talk about them, uh, regardless. So thank you for coming on. Uh, and uh, I, I, I do hope that you are able to, to feel some level of, of safety. I, again, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't think it's uh, fun to be caught in the situation 
that is unfolding right now, uh, the first half of the attacks or the ones that are going on right now. So, are you still there? Oh, did I lose you? I think I lost you. Okay, good night. I, I, I think their phone might have died. I unironically think their phone might have died. <sighs> wow, that was an intense conversation. My goodness. Um, wow, I don't even know what to say about that.